Number four, letter A. What is the period of rotation of Earth in seconds? All right, so letter A. Uh, how long does it take to Earth go around? Well, you might say around what? Uh, not around the sun, but around its own axis. You'd say a day, right? So that works. Okay, so one day. It takes the Earth to go around its own axis in a day. So how do we get from, basically now the question is, how do we get from days to seconds? So we do a conversion, right? We start with the day. We have to put day on the bottom. Now you could put second on the top if you do know the relationship between days and seconds, meaning how many seconds there are on a day or how many days there are on a second. I don't know that. So I'm going to first put hours because I do know the relationship between days and hours and I realize that an hour is shorter right than a day. So I'm trying to get from a bigger unit to a smaller unit. So I want to try to work my way down, right? So I know that there's 24 hours in a day. So that's great. But now I got hours. Well, I don't want to know hours, I want to know seconds. So the next question is, do I know relationship, relationship between hours and seconds? Nope, don't know that yet, even though it's right 3,600 seconds in an hour. But let's pretend we don't. But I do easily know the relationship between hours and minutes, right? That there's 60 minutes in an hour. So I'm getting smaller still, right? I got minutes, but I still not done because I want seconds. And then I'm thinking, well, I got to cancel minutes, so they got to go in the denominator. I want seconds. Do I know a relationship now? And you're like, ah, yes, I do. 60 seconds in a minute. So this is all it is. All right, so 24 times 60 times 60, 86,400, right? So we got eight, I'll just write it down like this, 86,400, and that's seconds. Okay, this is the period. All right, so that's great. That is the period. That is the answer to letter A. Now it says for letter B, what is the angular velocity of the Earth? Okay, so for letter B, what is the angular velocity? Now remember, take a look on the right-hand side, guys. Angular velocity is this unit right here, omega, okay? It's like a little booty. So I know in order to calculate angular velocity, I need to know the change in the amount of radians, right? Radians are similar to revolution. Remember that 2 pi radian is equal to 1 revolution, okay? And then I have to know the time over which it occurs. So in order to find then omega, right, or the angular velocity, I need to know the radians of rotation. I put it as r, but it's really theta. Uh, and the amount of time it takes to, um, <laughs> sorry, the amount of time it takes to undergo that one uh, rotation or that revolution. All right. so. So what, what do we need to know now? So somehow we do have a time here, right? We realize that it takes the Earth this many seconds, right, in order to go around once, in order to make one revolution. Oh, okay. So wait, I think I might see what to do, right? So wait a minute. If it takes the Earth 86,400 seconds, that's a time. That's good. And it takes this amount of time to go once around, and I know that one revolution is the same as two pi radians, that means I could just plug two pi up here, right? Radians, oh, easy enough. And then I get radians per second, and that is, the, or those are the units for angular velocity. So all we need to do now is take two pi, and then divide it by 86,400. Okay, so here we got this value. So it rotates 7.27 times 10 to the minus five radians per second. Okay, so that sounds good to me. All right, great. Now, knowing this, you might say, well, that sounds really slow. Well, that's just the degree it changes, all right, per second. And I shouldn't really say degree because it's radian, but most people understand degree better than radian, although they're the same thing. So you might say that's slow, but eh, that's only half the picture. You have to know, in order to figure out the real tangential velocity, oh, wait a minute, that's the question number C, right? Or question, uh, not number C, C is not a number, is it? It's a letter. So given that Earth has a radius of 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters at its equator, what is the linear velocity? So this is really what we're after, all right, in terms of how fast it's moving, all right, or how fast we're moving on the, on the, uh, circumference of the earth. 
Okay, so now for letter C, let me write it over here. We need to now find an, find an equation that relates uh, angular velocity to tangential velocity or just velocity overall and take a look on the right hand side. That's this equation. Okay, I could write it like this. V sub t for uh, tangential velocity uh, is equal to the radius of the circle multiplied by the angular velocity. So do we know the radius? Well, they just told us in the problem, it's 6.4 times 10 to the sixth, okay? And take that and multiply it by now your angular velocity. So it becomes 7.27 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, great, and then simply calculate. So the tangential velocity here will be 7.27 times 10 to the minus five times 6.4 times 10 to the sixth. And we get a value of 465, so 465 meters per second, right? And there we go. This is now the velocity at which you're traveling, 465 meters per second. Now that's pretty fast, all right? So that should now make sense. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Really do hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Check it out.